There are a few characters that can justifiably stake a claim for this, but in my eyes, at least from what I can glean given my limited perspective on fan reception as I've slowly been catching up, Kaido is without doubt the most misunderstood and underappreciated character in One Piece. But while it is a shame when writers are not properly given their flowers when it comes to the quality of their characters, this reception makes sense given the style of his writing and presentation. Kaido is unquestionably the most subtle, subtextual, understated, and interpretive character in One Piece, with Oda putting together the comprehensive picture of who he is with little breadcrumbs slowly unveiled throughout the story from his introduction and on. While a lot of characters throughout the narrative are front-loaded through prominent characterization or simply but very effectively laid out with extensive backstories, Kaido goes for ages without much but little lines and tiny glimpses of his past, such that by the time it does hit in the minimalistic way it does, it is more of a confirmation of what we know already rather than a revelation. But only if we're properly paying attention. Katakuri, another of One Piece's best characters, was also very much a nudge into this direction with a lot of the subtext associated with him at the end of Whole Cake Island, but Kaido has Oda going full-on Togashi with this piecemeal, integrative, puzzle-piece-driven approach. He is one of the best and most complex characters in the story, so much so that streaming my journey from his introduction onwards had me gobsmacked at the quality here. And along with this, learning about the general lack of appreciation for him was the final straw in making me break my rule of not making any video essays on One Piece, because Kaido deserves it. But this is the first and last time this'll happen. Definitely. Through this video, I hope to change your mind on Kaido for the positive, to some extent, in case you aren't a fan of him, to help you reach conclusions you may not have otherwise, assist you in piecing together the complexities of his psychology, or just generally enhance your appreciation for the character and story, like always. He is a challenging personality to understand and love, but he is so rewarding for what he adds to Wano, what he says about the main themes of the series, and how he juxtaposes multiple characters throughout the story. Let's start at the beginning. As we know from flashbacks and little details, Kaido was someone who dreamed from the start. With the catalyst for this being a disillusionment with the systematic layout of the world and how it functions dictated by those unsuited for power, he held ambitions of becoming the king of the pirates. He wanted to change the world and turn it on its head. He had dreams and hope and a desire to be free, and he liberated many on the way to this as they got caught up in his storm. Just like a certain straw hat. And this is important, because the Kaido-Luffy dynamic is without doubt one of the most telling and revealing in the entire series, but more on that later. Along with this desire to change the world, this hope, this dream, Kaido was a lover of honorable duels and combat, the type representative of the purest form of shonen. Simply put, Kaido loves fighting, testing himself against the best in battle, and key to this is that he loves these fights to be fair, as he lives in a way that strictly adheres to a set of moral principles that he holds close to his chest. Honor, binding words and vows, a classic sort of respect between foes, with no underhanded or dishonest means. And in conjunction with all of this, Kaido also wanted to leave a legacy and mark on the world that was loyal to himself, an impressive one that showed that he walked the earth, lived free and honestly and heartfully, and made an impact consistent with these ideals. And he learned of Joy Boy, learned of what he represented, took solace in his legend, and in my opinion, desired to some extent to become that symbol, this era's Joy Boy, at least in part. Because in addition to all that I just stated, Kaido also wanted to be loved. He wanted people to hope in him, he wanted connections, and he hated the idea of being lonely. That was Kaido, and that still is Kaido, to an extent. However, the crux of Kaido and what caused him to spiral and despair is that while he held these principles and reached out for them, he was rarely if ever able to grasp them. The world and life itself always took it away from him in one way or another. Whether it be through his own actions or weakness, misfortune, the whims of greedy underhanded men, or anything else. When faced with hurdles, Kaido was never able to live the way he wanted and have his ideals actualized, and as a result, he slowly but surely saw his ambitions rot before him. He gradually realized how big the world was, how agonizingly difficult it was to achieve any dreams at all, let alone ones as big as his. And every obstacle he met, he combated not with determination and unflinching belief in his path, but with despair. 
This ultimately led to him teaming up with someone diametrically opposite to him and his views on the world, Orochi, and it continued to spiral until he reached what was in my opinion the most pivotal moment of his life, where he met Odin, a man seemingly after his own heart. Odin lived louder than anyone else. He was fierce and free, with dreams of conquest and exploration, and that is how Kaido always wanted to live before his meagerness took hold. After having taken over Odin's home in Wano, he began fighting with this man who embodied his ideal, and he started feeling something he had long since seemingly forgotten. This pure ascending combat is what he desired. However, Orochi, with his cowardly, devious plan to distract and cripple Odin, stole this fight from Kaido, and the latter wound up devastated as again, life took from him what he yearned for, and again, partly as a result of his own actions. Kaido killed the hag responsible for the farce, tried to compensate, and agreed to honor Odin's wish of allowing all his men to not be executed if he survived the boiling pot trial for an hour. An honorable agreement between the two. And yet again, Orochi even took that away, changing the rules right when it became clear that Odin had won. Kaido deeply respected all that Odin was, and continuously tried to convey that respect, but it was taken from him again and again, and by the end, the best he could do was provide the mercy of the shot that ended the life of the soul of Wano. When it comes to Odin, Kaido looked on in envy and admiration for how he lived. And this nuanced mix of emotions is how he feels for people who embrace life, enact true change, make connections, live freely, and generally reflect the ideal that he strove to meet but was never able to. Odin was the most prominent for obvious reasons, but that's also how he felt about Roger, and most recently, Luffy. For Kaido, looking at these exploits feels like looking into an alternate universe and seeing himself living the way he wants to. These are complex feelings with many aspects to them, filled with a sort of vicarious fulfillment and a respect, but also tinged with immense envy and bitterness that he is not strong enough to live that way. Odin drinks with others, and Kaido drinks alone. And Odin's death here, carried out in a way that cemented his legacy, garnered widespread love and appreciation, impacting Kaido tremendously and making him adopt the philosophy that death completes a person. From here on, this caused Kaido to seek out death, seeing it as a potential salvation and a last resort to fast track to his dreams, hoping with desperation that it would somehow reverse the person he had become. He wanted to cement his legacy and maybe make people think differently of him by going out in a blaze of glory loyal to the type of person he wanted to be. He thinks, can no one kill me? Can I not go out in this blaze of glory in a fight with someone, toe to toe? And with that possibility gone, he wonders, can I not even do this myself? Am I cursed to this forever? Kaido is left with nothing, and this futility is truly sobering, even if a large portion of this is his own fault. He wanted to die in a way loyal to who he wanted to be to leave a legacy and complete himself in a way that he desired. But the problem here was core to his problem as a person. He was forcing it. He didn't understand that the people who he views with envy and admiration, who died and were completed, were completed because they died as they lived and everything came naturally and followed to leave a legacy of the person that they were. Kaido ruled with terror, represented darkness, and dominated with power, such that the vast majority of those around him only followed him because of fear. But it meant that he was living a dead life, purposeless, not worth living due to how it spurned his goals, dreams, hope, ideals, and connections with others. Even if he died a perfect death, that would not change the fact that his life was hollow, because he made no accumulating connections to solidify a legacy that would live on after he died. And so Kaido's efforts to die and complete himself here were futile and desperate considering his goal. He had become an antithesis to his heart. He had undercut himself, and I can't imagine how painful that must be. But he can have no complaints, and the pain of this does not at all morally excuse him. He gave up and colluded with the one he would and should never have in Orochi, and it led to him doing heinous, disgusting, evil things to Wano. The world is tough, but the truly spiritually strong don't give up as he did and become an antithesis of their heart. When faced with challenges, they persevere and live loyal to their ideals, like Luffy did, and Roger did, and Odin did, and Hiraluk did. 
But outside of one important exception which we'll discuss later, because of Kaido undercutting himself, he isn't able to inspire people in the way others were inspired by those men. And so, death would not complete him. Beautiful deaths follow beautiful lives. While Kaido is physically strong, he is spiritually weak for how easily he compromises on his ideals, and the weak do not get to choose how they die. Because even if this wouldn't work, Kaido cannot even achieve this feeble martyrdom. Not only can he not find the perfect way to die, but no one is able to kill him, even himself. Death eludes him. Everything eludes him. And in addition to this, to rub salt in the wound with finality, Kaido's child Yamato is inspired and aspires to be a great man. That man not being Kaido himself, but Odin, the man Kaido admires and envies with a fervent passion and bitterness. Of course, as a father, he wanted Yamato to reflect himself, maybe thinking of this as a final chance to leave a proud legacy of his own. But no. Because of the cruelty he imparted and how he lived, Yamato rebels and Odin always gets the last laugh. But interestingly, in a gesture that reflects the man Kaido was and still wants to be, Kaido respects Yamato's identity and endeavors, and tests those endeavors accordingly by putting Yamato through a very similar trial that Odin went through, one of intense endurance. And once again, Kaido loses. A huge theme tackled throughout the Wano arc is that of yearning. A nostalgic yearning for a home lost, for people gone, adrift in the annals of time, for freedom and dreams. And Kaido is one of the foremost examples of that, for he is full of yearning, for his ideals and ambitions, for honorable duels, for respect and honesty, for pure combat and battles, full-blooded till the end, for a beautiful death. But his yearning always goes unfulfilled, stolen from him, sometimes by himself. And this leaves him as a despairing husk, wondering if he is destined to always yearn. But then, as he has done to so many others, Luffy alters Kaido's life. The man who inspires freedom, hope, and dreams in others does the same for his adversary in the process of fighting back against him and liberating Wano. And this changes Kaido. Despite defeating him handily at first, he senses something in Luffy, this perseverance and enduring hope, this ferocity despite defeat, and this spurns him to have faith that maybe Luffy could be the one to make his heart dance, that maybe he is Joy Boy. And with this being the catalyst, Kaido changes his approach completely. He loves bouts and honor and fights. He desires hope and ideals for himself. He wants to become king and change the world. And he wants friends. Yet he has none of this, at least in his eyes. And so he decides that if the world does not have anything for him, he will make a new one. This brings forth new Onigashima, a battling ground for the strongest, a true new world that will not take his hope from him, where he can live as he wants and ultimately die as he wants, sensing that it may not actually be too late. In the process of formally declaring this, he cuts the head off Orochi, the man symbolic of all that antithesized him and stole from him and all that he hates in the world. And unable to stop himself from hoping, he gains a new lease on life. He barrels towards this, telling others of his agony that people don't follow him because they love him, but instead due to fear. He hallucinates of a beautiful ideal battle that he seeks with Luffy, all the while pouring his soul out about the loneliness of strength, seeing nothing at his peak but a barren wasteland. This is his dying gasp for hope. But in reality, he beats Luffy again. And it is so bitterly disappointing, so lamentable. Luffy, whom he admires and envies, not even he could give him the battle he seeks. And through all this, he states that human beings cannot give up hope, and that he sees that as a problem. And that is the crux, a summary of why Kaido is an antithesis. Hope, the struggle, is an encapsulation of the entire Detours theme present throughout One Piece. The joy of a never-ending journey. The lack of a desire of the knowledge of the One Piece being actualized. The experiences and struggles on the way to that goal are far more important than the goal itself, even if they are difficult and painful at times. Luffy and his crew embrace the endless horizon, wondering if they'll reach the end of it one day but not thinking of it as necessary and enjoying the ride along the way. Kaido laments not being able to reach it and sees that horizon as the most painful thing in the world. 
When he says that he thinks hope is a problem, it is because he is speaking from experience. He knows that hope too well, and he knows that it is the problem because he hopes consistently, and all it does is provide him with pain. Kaido and Luffy are extremely similar in some ways. Similar end goals, similar worldviews, similar passions. But they are polar opposites at the same time, as Kaido is agonized by the journey while Luffy celebrates it. However, Kaido can't help but continuously strive for it regardless. It's almost like a muscle memory in the face of futility. And going back to his second victory over Luffy, he thinks to himself that he should have killed him, because now despite his defeat, people all over will keep believing in him. And he's right. And it's because of what we just discussed. Luffy hopes and celebrates the long journey. Kaido hopes and despairs over that journey. And because of that, given the choice, even tossing aside the horrific implications of Kaido's plan, people will always hope for Luffy. For as long as he breathes, people will hope for him. He is the sun. But Kaido is the darkness. When he couldn't reach his ideal, he brought the night, while Luffy brings the day no matter what. And that is why Luffy will always win, in every sense. I don't know if Kaido wanted to be a hero, but he definitely wanted all the things that came with being one. But having resigned himself, he will play the villain and the gatekeeper for that which he failed to reach. A hopelessly sad existence. This is summed up beautifully through a line he speaks towards the climax of that fight. That victors need no epithet. The losers, the ones who die, are mourned and spoken of romantically to compensate for their defeat. But winners need none, he says, for everyone knows of their strength. Yet, he wants an epithet. He wants people to speak of him like they do of those who die and are defeated. He would know better than anyone that no one speaks about the victor, because he is the quote-unquote strongest and never loses, yet he never gets the love and is filled with loneliness. And yet he's wrong, because many victors are spoken of. He isn't not spoken of because he's a victor. It's because he's isolated himself. It's because he's the Kaido he has become. That is the crux here. Kaido holds an ember of hope within him, but acts against himself due to despair and fear. Luffy, with the hope of the connections he's formed due to his enduring spirit, never undercuts himself. Kaido is the gatekeeper of Joy Boy, searching for the one who will give him what he wants, thinking of the one to defeat him as the fated Nika, and declaring all those who fail to not be him. But why specifically does he seek them out? Well firstly, he believes that the one person who will bring him freedom is the embodiment of freedom. But secondly, I think he wants to see his ultimate ideal, his horizon, in the flesh. If he yearned to be Joy Boy once but did not achieve his goal, if he could not be him, he will simply admire and envy. That's all that his life has become, and he has condemned himself to just watch from the sidelines as a stepping stone. And that is key. It's all about his mindset. He is not the antithesis of Joy Boy because of any other reason than the fact that his mindset condemns him, the way he views the world. Maybe he could have been Joy Boy, or at least something close to it, if he had been stronger. And while Luffy is the perfect foil to display this, Kaido's dynamic with Momonosuke tells a tale as well. Here we have two dragons. One is far more fearsome physically than the other, but the other is far stronger spiritually, with a conviction and perseverance foreign to Kaido and an honest soul that pulls people around him and helps them see him as a true shogun and leader, someone to love. And as such, we have core similarities and perfect opposites, true foils once more. And another detail I love is that Luffy and Yamato, two people core to Kaido's complex psychology at this point, help guide Momo through his fight when he ages up and becomes the giant dragon, showing the importance of connection as he is able to see clearly, literally, due to those he has garnered bonds with. Kaido's physical strength and spiritual weakness are contrasted by the fact that Momo gets spiritually stronger with every second he spends with Luffy, a connection, that which Kaido seems to have cast off and given up on. In Odin, in Luffy, and now in Momo, he sees this ideal that he strived for but hasn't been able to reach. What good is all this strength if it just isolates him and undercuts him? He is empty and hollow, and while Kaido considers his power something that isolates him, Luffy's strength inspires others to grow stronger and fight. And it begins to seem even more like a curse when CP0, in the full-blooded passion of the fight, interfere and prevent Kaido from settling his fair duel with Luffy just as was done to Odin ages prior. 
At this point, despite the uptick in his Ember of Hope, it seems inevitable and karmic that he is to always yearn, always be cheated from this, for history to always repeat itself. And yet… and yet… In a world where Kaido has not perished, there is more to this. I did liken this to muscle memory and going through the motions as Kaido continues to seemingly fruitlessly stride towards the top, but is it more than that? He talks from experience about how people cannot give up hope, perhaps thinking about how he wishes he could lose hope, but just can't. While I do say that he despairs, not every part of him has completely given up. Because he still searches, he still hopes for Joy Boy, deep within. He still tries to achieve his own goals. It's a dark, despairing complexion, a paradoxical hope, but it is there regardless, a flame still within him. Sometimes all it takes is one thing, one person, to turn things around and change a life, and luckily for Kaido, he has multiple. And first is the person we've been talking about all this time, Luffy. In the legendary moment where he became the embodiment of Joy Boy, where he was almost reborn as the one he's always been all this time, the sun god Nika, things shifted permanently not just for the story, for Luffy, and for the world, but for Kaido. He sees him and is defeated by him, and all the regular feelings apply for sure, admiration and envy. But something else is added to it more awe, and perhaps inspiration. I think that in finally seeing his final ideal come to life, Kaido is inspired. From one viewpoint, it doesn't quite make sense that he would feel that way upon being beaten to the ground in multiple ways, but from another, it really does. Luffy doesn't make traditional sense, Nika doesn't, Joy Boy doesn't. They are these unexplainable figures, and that enigmatic nature is why they inspire freedom and hope regardless. And so Kaido, in seeing that he does exist, through being defeated by him, felt his ember of belief heating up. I think that he realized that it isn't too late for him to become what he wanted to become. Because in this fight, through their blows traded, and through the way that Kaido almost coached Luffy to combat him, in the end, he had fun. Luffy liberated him and granted his dream. Luffy allowed Kaido to touch the heavens before becoming that heaven-sent boy in totality. Luffy gave him what he wanted and fostered a belief that he could become stronger. But that can only take him so far, and I think that just as, if not more important than that, could be Kaido's relationship with King. King, whose life of subjugation and inhumane experimentation was changed infinitely for the better due to Kaido's storm, who revered him and dedicated his heart, come what may, to his cause. King was a genuine connection for Kaido, one not unlike Luffy and Zoro, who have one of the strongest bonds in the series. But Kaido just can't see it. Kaido also arguably has connections with the likes of Whitebeard and Linlin -Lin to an extent. Not super intimate, nor as powerful as King's, but enough of a bond to be notable. But he just doesn't see these either, which renders them invalid from his perspective. But his relationship with King is special, unique, and tinged with meaning. From the perspective of King, it is extremely sad, even if he doesn't think so. He serves Kaido due to his love for him and how he saved his life. He believes that Kaido will be King of the Pirates, even if Kaido has all but given up himself. Kaido's ambition of this is buried so deep within that he resembles a husk. And yet, King is indebted to this ghost. But the thing is, as I said, as long as there's a tiny glimmer of hope, all it takes is one person to believe in you to reignite it. And so maybe Kaido can believe again, thanks to King. Believe in actualizing his ideal, becoming the King of the Pirates, in not compromising on his morals and principles and yearning for all that he values. Maybe this connection, this karmic belief that took root due to Kaido's belief in King, will come back around and save him in the most poetic way, to bring him back for one last chance. Luffy, Odin, Momo, and Yamato are all essential parts of Kaido's journey, but they're all combatants. And Kaido needs to realize that he has at least one person by his side that truly believes in and loves him. Kaido is King's joy boy, and King is proof that Kaido is still going through the motions for a reason. And that is why King could be most important of all, seeking nothing but Kaido's victory and cementing of his legacy as the strongest, no matter what that may mean. Now, I don't know if Kaido is to make it out of that volcano, but if he is, and if afterwards he is to survive and fight and gun for his dream and turn his life around, 
If it really isn't too late, I think that will be in large part due to the karmic belief of King, who he saved all that time ago, fueled by a belief in this mythic figure of awe. If Oda decides that Kaido's story is not yet done, he has every chance to stop yearning and start achieving. And Wano is where that shift occurred. Kaido's majestic form is that of the Azure Dragon, representative of enlightenment, harmony, perseverance, and prosperity. And this is beautifully ironic, because that is the ideal he strived to reach. It is everything he wishes he could be, but isn't because of his weakness. And yet he masquerades as a symbol of what he wishes he was anyway. But he isn't fooling anyone, and it is up to him, and yet unclear if he will ever live up to the station he set for himself through his beast form. In the early days of his time in the narrative, Kaido stated that life is not a series of simple questions and simple answers. And along with that doubling as a very meta comment on what it takes to properly understand and dissect his character, in context he knew this better than anyone. How can I live in a way that I can be proud of? How can I feel? How can I stop acting against my heart? What caused me to sink like this? These are all questions that he no doubt asked himself, and none of them has a straightforward answer. But the key here is in the perseverance and conviction to stay true, and that is something he lacked. This man who strived for the sun soon became representative of the night because of his inability to deal with the unfairness of the world. And what that contrast says for him, for Luffy, for Wano, and for One Piece as a whole, it's more than words can say. Kaido is a difficult character to understand, but the more you give it an honest go, the clearer the realization becomes that he is one of the very best characters Oda has ever crafted, and more profound than anyone really realizes. Many thanks for watching.